Metroid Dread is not an easy game. And it's even more difficult if this is your first time jumping into a proper 2D Metroid game. But fortunately, it's a type of difficulty that's surmountable once you've got some experience and knowledge under your various suit. So if you find yourself overwhelmed by maps, overpowered by enemies, or dreading the Emmys, here are 20 tips that you need to know in Metroid Dread. First off, let's talk about some exploration tips. Areas that you haven't explored yet will be darker on the map than places you've been to. If you're trying to find out where you need to go next, consider finding a spot on the map that's a darker shade and look around the area, shoot at walls, and try to find some hidden routes. Along those lines, never forget the golden rule of Metroid. Bomb and shoot everything. Metroid games rarely give any sort of hints with regards to whether a wall is breakable or not. The only way to find out is to shoot either a missile, a charge shot, or use a bomb on a wall to reveal the symbol that indicates what kind of upgrade is needed to break it. When you happen upon one of these symbols that you can't break yet, use one of your markers so you know to return back to it once you get the necessary upgrade. If you see a spot on the map that's flashing, it means that there's a secret hidden within its walls. Oftentimes, you won't be able to find it until you have a late game power up, so don't spend too much time if you've already implemented the Metroid Golden Rule and shot up all the walls and you still can't find anything. You can actually highlight specific types of doors or barriers on the map to let you know where all the same types of objects are. This can be extremely useful if you've just gained a power and are looking for all the new areas that you can explore. If you find yourself in a spot where you need health or missiles and a trip to the recharge station is too daunting, keep an eye out for spots where enemies continuously respawn, like the centipedes that emerge from holes in the ground. And now for some combat tips. Parrying is a must in Metroid Dread, not just because it's a way to instantly kill enemies that would otherwise take a whole minute of filling them full of missiles and beam blasts, but also because it's often literally required or at the very least strongly encouraged in certain boss fights and will also result in a bunch of health and missile pickups that will no doubt save your life when you start to run low on resources. Along those lines, not every enemy can be parried, but every attack can be avoided. When you encounter a new imposing enemy, like these laser robots for instance, take some time to learn about its attack patterns and how you can avoid it. Once you get it, don't forget about your flash shift ability. It's originally presented as a move that lets you get past sensor doors, but it's also an invaluable combat maneuver, especially during later boss battles. And finally, on the combat front, don't be stingy with your missiles. Enemies that might seem like bullet sponges when you shoot them with your blaster will often go down with just one or two missile shots, so don't forget to use them. It's very easy to replenish missiles in this game, so don't feel like you ever need to hoard them for special occasions. Now let's talk about Shine Spark. Yes, Shine Spark gets its own subsection because a lot of the tricks that are needed to solve its puzzles aren't explicitly taught to you. Shine Spark is an ability you'll learn once you get the speed booster. Basically, while you're in a speed boost, you tilt the stick down to store a Shine Spark charge, which can then be released in any direction by pressing jump and a direction. Part of the trick of using the Shine Spark is knowing how to keep your speed boost going. Once the speed boost activates, you can keep it going even while bouncing off walls. Once you store the Shine Spark charge, you have a few seconds where you can freely move on the ground, in case you need to place a bomb or position yourself wherever you need to be. You can also still jump while you have the Shine Spark stored by holding left or right to spin jump. You can even activate the Shine Spark while in the air by shooting to get out of a spin and then pressing a direction and the jump button. And now finally, let's talk about the Emmys. The first and most important piece of advice about the Emmy Zones is never spend too much time in them while an Emmy is around. Even if you die, which you will, you'll start at the entrance of the last door you went through, so it will never feel like too much progress is lost if you make your visits as quick as you can. So always go in with a goal, even if it's as simple as just getting to another exit door. Listen for the Emmy's chirping sound, which will be the best indication of how close they are if you can't see their red dot on your minimap. If an enemy spots you, know that you both generally run at the same pace, so as long as you have a stretch of ground to run on, it won't be able to catch you. That said, later Emmys will have ways to stun you with projectiles, so this won't work all the time. If an Emmy has been alerted to your presence but hasn't actually seen you yet, you can cloak and it will stop before it runs into you. This gives you a precious few seconds to walk while cloaked and get out of its path. Note that this will not work if the Emmy has max hostility towards you, which is denoted by flashing red lights and intense music. You'll need to run away enough to the point where you can see the yellow cone of vision once again. If you do decide to hide while cloaked on small platforms, make sure you're hugging the wall as close as you can. 
or even if the enemy isn't onto you, it will discover you and it will feel bad. Similarly, keep an eye out for spots where the enemy jumps onto the wall. You never want to hide on the ceiling just above a platform, since that's usually where the enemy will jump to the ceiling. If you do get caught, you have two chances to break free. The first is when it grabs you, and the second is when it tries to stab you. If you do manage to break free, you can slide under it and quickly put some distance between you and the enemy before it wakes up. Hopefully these tips help you to survive the dangers that lie deep beneath the surface of Planet ZDR. Thanks for watching, and for more Metroid Dread, make sure to check out our full review. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.